A very common question I get asked is, what is the difference between procs and lambdas and methods? And there are a number of subtle differences. So I want to first kind of illustrate why this is even an important topic. So right here, I have a variable, then I have a lambda, and then I have a regular method. Now if I come down here, and let's say that I have a greeting method. I could say greeting and say, hey there inside of it. And now if I call greeting, then this is going to just print out hey there, which is the expected behavior. So that seems so far everything there is the same. Now if I create a lambda, so let's say that I have a greeting lambda and I can use the stabby lambda syntax here and inside of it I can return hey there just like before and now I can call greeting lambda and just say call. Now if I run this, you're going to see this is the exact same output. So you can see right there, this is the same. Now this is a very different type of object. As you can see right here, this creates a proc in a lambda object. And so that's different than just a regular plain method. But one of the very first thoughts you may have is, you know, what, what in the world do I need lambdas for over a method and why are they different? And in this guide and also in the next one, we're going to talk about that. So first I want to talk about accessing variables. So let's come down. I'm going to get rid of all of this and let's look at the examples I have up here. This is a little bit of a different coding exercise. It's less about taking a challenge and learning how to build it and more of understanding the key differences between lambdas and methods so that you can know when to use them. So right here, I have a value, it is set to zero, and then I have what's called a proc process. It's just a variable that is storing a lambda function. And then I just have some method. Now, if I come up here inside of the block and I just say val, which is the name of our variable right here. So if I say val, and then I increment it by one, then this is going to allow me to call it. So if I do proc process call and run this, then this is going to increment it and it's going to allow me to call it. Now this is cool. I can also multiply it out a few times. And now if I run this, you can see that it calls it, and the first time it calls it, it changes the variable to one, next time two, three, four, all the way down. So every time that it gets called, it actually can communicate with this outside value. So that's a very important thing to understand. Now if I come down here to some method, and I try to do the exact same thing. So if I say val and increment it by one, Watch what happens if I try to call some method. If I just try to call this even once, you're going to see that this now throws an error. So you can see right here, it gets a no method error and it says undefined plus for nil nil class. And what that means is right here on line 15, this variable does not have access, or I should say this method does not have access to the variable. So where our lambda was able to grab this val and it took it, it was able to read it, it knew it started at zero, and then it was able to perform processes on it and actually change the value in some method, in just a regular Ruby method, it doesn't have access to it. And this is where one of the key differences between lambdas and methods are. And it's one of the most common things. Whenever I teach students about lambdas and show them how to do it, the first question they ask is, why in the world would I need that? Because I'm essentially creating some process and then I'm calling it. That's 
exactly how a method works. And at a high level, yes, that's the case, but there are some very small differences. And one of them deals with variable scope, which means that a proc or a lambda is, and which is, they're very similar. They're uh, just don't worry about kind of the subtle difference between a proc and a lambda. For right now, you can just see that they are both processes that can encapsulate various behavior and they have access to outside variables so that's still within a proc scope whereas a method does not have that access any kind of access for variables or anything like that is not going to work inside of a method only inside of a proc so whenever you are building out a process and you need to have access to a uh, to a separate to a local variable of the program. Then that can be a time where a lambda can be helpful. Let me get rid of this test data, and I'm going to open this up and run it just to make sure that the tests are passing. And oh, looks like we have one little. Oh, we have yes, we have one issue because it's going to raise an error right here so that I just need to not call it so now if I switch it back run it again you can see we have two examples and no failures just to take a quick look at what the tests are doing it's essentially what we already walked through it shows that a proc or lambda can access a variable outside its scope and process it just like we did right here and then also that a method, when it tries to access an outside local variable, it is going to raise an error. It's going to raise a no method error, which is exactly what we saw. So both those tests are passing. And hopefully now you can see one of the differences between procs, lambdas, and methods in Ruby.